FA Cup weekend and it's all already underway. I, I, I don't know if I've seen rain like that last night, no, Simon. Torrential, uh, wasn't it? Down here in the southeast. Biblical. Somehow they got through it at Crystal Palace and somehow uh, the, the game came to a conclusion and they've got to do it all again. Um, th- that apart, no goals on the night and another big talking point. Um, VAR, maybe unsurprisingly, at the heart of it because um, I, I, I don't know what I made of it at the time. I must be honest. When, when, when I watched it, Dominic Calvert-Lewin, never in trouble before like this, never red carded in his life and then gets red carded um, for those who don't know the referee Chris Kavanagh went to the monitor came back and then produced the red and off went Dominic Calvert-Lewin Sean Dyche had plenty to say afterwards and all this screen thing oh my goodness every fan in the country surely I'm not just speaking for myself it can't be surely every fan was going oh why are we killing the game and the speed when you go that screen we all know what's going to happen so uh, Anyway, it's a massive frustration to me, and I'm a fan of VR, but I just don't see what that's all about. Were you hoping that the referee, having reviewed it again, having seen it in real time and not made it's not any happen, that's the point. Was he, that's, were you hoping that he was going to turn around oh, well, and say, I, I no? I'll tell you what, I hope someone can send me a clip in of when it does get turned over, because I can't remember one. There must be one out there, but I, I have no clue what the stats are now. It's got to be like 99.7% that it's going to get agreed with. So what's the point in doing it? You know, if it's going to be 0.3 of a chance of it getting down, what's the point? Yeah. Just bizarre to me. When they're on about speed in the game, by the way, that's the thing. So, I mean, that was, that was Sean, who somehow gets through post-match interviews uh, after giving his voice an absolute doing throughout the 90 minutes. If you want to slow-mo everything, you have to slow-mo everything. Uh, there's minor contact, and in live time, the referee, Chris Kavanagh, doesn't give anything. Then they slow it down and then everything looks worse. Do you go with that, man? When it's in slow-mo, you see it totally differently to what actually happened in normal time. Yeah, it, it, it does look differently. And But I think a part of protocol should be that the last incident that you look at is in real speed. So then you can actually look at it correctly and say, well, okay, what was it a foul or wasn't it? I, I was appalled with the decision, actually. I... I thought Calvert Lewin was actually trying to slow down actually within the tackle and I didn't see any contact. Um I thought the referee would go to the screen Stands immediately. Up, though, aren't they? Stands them up a little they bit. are, but I don't think he makes contact. No, I agree. And I think he's trying to actually slow down the the velocity as he goes into the challenge. And I couldn't quite understand why the referee once he's put in that situation. I think I think VAR should actually stay out of it. Referee was happy at the time, but when he goes back to the screen, I think that should have been a moment where the referee says, "You know what? No, no, I'm still comfortable." But I wonder what sort of pressure he'd have been under. I agree, Martin. That's that. what I thought was going to happen. When he went to the scene, I thought he was going to turn around and say, no, it's all right, Calvin Lewin, you stay on the pitch. But he red-carded him. The fact of the matter is this, Simon, he's now facing a three-game ban. If that's overturned, does that not undermine the technology? Well, the technology is, is interpreted. It's not the technology, it's the people that interpret it. And, uh, and, if, you, and if there was ever a case... To, um, to rescind something, I think there's a very good argument for that one, given the nature of the punishment that comes with it. I don't think making a mistake and then addressing the mistake afterwards is undermining it. I think you're undermining the officials and their decision, and every now and again people make mistakes and they have to be held accountable for them. I, you know, I look at the reaction of the player. I think it was Nathaniel, uh, Nathaniel Klein, yeah. and I don't think his reaction helps because if there's no contact, I don't think mm. he needs to make a four-act play out of it. And, and I've known Nathaniel since he was a young kid because he came out of my academy. He's not that sort of player, but they're all that sort of player these days because ultimately <laughs> they get themselves an opportunity to disadvantage the opposition. I think it's harsh. I, Martin, do you think that that was, a, that was a clear... Was there a need for VAR to be involved from the outset? No, Did it look like either. a clear... Given the fact the referees made nothing, nothing of it, do you think there was a clear and obvious call on that which... It called for the VAR I don't in the first that, place, and then they and then they go with the initial decision. I, I, do you know? I, I don't think VAR was brought in for this type of thing. I think it was. No, like, I don't it, think it was either. It, it, it's it, they're getting the wrong VAR is going into the wrong area, Jim. Why is it getting involved in this situation? Mm. I mean, they must be embarrassed. The people that came up with the idea for VAR because they this is not there. It wasn't put in for for this very reason. Um, this. If you remember that you two were trying to sort of hold me to account about a, a <laughs> review panel, that do, do they look at this? Do they look at this, the group of former players, and, and what decision will they come to on this one, Jim? Because I I really can't believe... I mean, I, I don't think Calvert Lewin's an aggressive player. It doesn't got anything to do no, with it. But no. he's now going to miss three vital Premier League games. They've just lost the last three games. They need him back again. And that is a, it's a disgrace, really, because I don't think it's an aggressive tackle at all. No. I mean, it doesn't help when someone like Will Hughes, I think, I, I, I hope I'm not doing him a disservice, but he's saying to Calvert Lewin, studs, 
studs. Mm. Um, and obviously, every, everybody's having their little say. Now, for the interesting, for, for, for the um, listeners this morning, what I can say is um, earlier on, before we came on air, um, referee, uh, producer Ryan and myself got in touch regards Kavanaugh's ultimate decision. We got in touch with the PGMOL. Again, Simon, yet to hear back from them. Mm-hmm. They've had an hour to get back to it and say, give us clarification as to why he arrived at the decision he arrived at. Because to be quite honest, the vast majority of people watching it are baffled. I mean, the challenge is, and again, I maintain this position, that the referees on the field have to be the ultimate authority. Mm. And they are the ultimate authority. And they have to have the courage of their convictions. It's a terminology that gets trotted out by me on almost daily basis in regards to this subject matter. If they believe that the decision that they made in the first instance in real time has resonance, then whilst you've got to accept that VAR will intervene at times when we don't think it should, it's still incumbent upon the referee who can be subjective and objective in the same breath because he's there. He gets to be subjective in the moment because he makes a decision and he gets to be objective after the event. And the referees on the field have got to have more about them. Yeah. And, and lest, I don't actually even think it's VAR's job to explain this. I think it's the on-field referee's job to explain it because the on-field referee... How made does he do that? How does he explain it? Well, well, again, after the match, I get, well, whatever mechanism is deployed, because yeah. we'll get a, we'll get a PGMOL explanation at some point, and at it may well point. it may well come. But what are they waiting for? Are they waiting for public opinion here? Are they waiting for managers? Opinion? Oh, I don't know what they're the feeling. I, I, don't, the I don't know what their protocols are. If their protocols are, I mean, there should be protocols that re- require them to be able to respond in a reasonable amount of time, and then they should be judged by those standards. Was everybody in work that night? So we're, we're sort of just after the Christmas period, a busy period. Was everyone I don't, there? I don't, I don't, I don't, in a Thursday night game? I don't know about conspiracy theories. A Thursday night FA Cup game? Well, you'd, well like, you'd like to think that's immaterial, isn't it? If the players can all be there and, and working and the grounds can be open, but you'd I agree, expect... I agree with you, Simon. At some stage, we need to hear from Kavanagh, i.e. Yeah. this morning, because he's in the, a statement via the PGMOL. It's, it's the PGMOL. It's not VAR that have made this decision. Yeah. It's VAR that have guided the referee to give him an opportunity to make a decision and yeah. the referee's gone with them rather than what There's he There's a regular listener, originally. Darren Wigley, saying no doubt slowing it down influences the referee's decision maybe it does because but it gives them time to but ponder still, over I, it. even in the slow motion i don't still don't think it's a red card yeah yeah simon the replay incidentally is expected to take place on the 17th of january yeah. slap bang in the middle of the premier league's winter break well that's great for sean yeah. dyche because sean dyche has been complaining about not wanting a winter break I mean, so he should be pleased. He gets precisely what he wants. This, earlier this week, he was remarking upon the fact that the only beneficiaries of a winter break are the bigger clubs. Okay, Sean, you don't have a winter break now. You've got you've got a replay, so you should be happy. Martin, you tell well, us a bit, bit on, on player welfare. Do you think there should be a replay? Do you think it well, should go I, to Goodison or should that have gone to a conclusion you know what, last think, night? I think what Sean Dyche is doing, he's looking from the point of view of his own football club. So he's happy to compete with the big clubs when they're playing in Europe. And he has what? He has one game a week and they might have three games a week. But he doesn't want to compete now when they condense the fixtures. And of course, they've got to have a period where they condense the fixtures. And he's saying, well, look, OK, he, doesn't, he wants that spread out. He doesn't want a break. Well, the break is actually for... They might, on average, <laughs> can't win, can you? On average, no. the, break, they don't on average the top teams have played six Champions League games or Europa League games more. Big they F. might have played four international games. They've played ten games more by the time they come to this, same, this stage of the season. But he's only got Pickford, squads. really. They've got he's bigger only, squads. He's only got Pickford within his group who comes on into that category, Jim. Yeah. So he wants the games spread out. Do you think it'll overturn... Calvert Lewin's red card. I hope there's been such an outcry about it. I think, I think, given the integrity of the game comes into question, a decision has been made that's universally accepted as being wrong, except on that moment in that particular time when it's it's the most pivotal part of the equation. Yeah, I I think it should be overturned. Yeah, because I think it's a poor decision. Sure. Just on Palace, Simon. Before we hit the break, this is your club. You love the club. Uh, I know it still has a big place in your heart. Southgate was there last night. uh, Yeah, watching it all unfold. As and when Roy goes... It'd be an irony about that, wouldn't it? What do you think? Well, how, how would you greet that news if we were to hear post the Euros, Gareth lands at Palace? Well, I, I think Gareth Southgate is an international manager that's done very well in managing the media and has had a remarkable embarrassment of riches of players. And so as a result of that, has been able to trade off that currency. And quite frankly, given the talent he's got at his disposal, it would be quite embarrassing if he hasn't achieved the things that he's achieved. Now, translate that into domestic football. Do I think Gareth Southgate is an elite manager or a Premier League manager? I don't. I don't. So the irony of it is for me, dollars for donuts. I'll be watching Gareth Southgate in the dugout at Crystal Palace in about eighteen months' time. Now, listen, you know Southgate has operated at a very high level internationally, but there's a vast, vast, vast difference 
between managing Crystal Palace and what you're given as the people at your disposal, i.e. the resources that you've got, and having an international team that's littered now, yeah. littered yeah. with top class and some of them actually genuinely world-class footballers. OK, what we do know is that Palace and Everton will do it all again. The replay is scheduled for the 17th of January, with or without Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.